welcome to this episode of VME End to End, uh, where you have a VM enthusiast and a former VM skeptic. So now you have two VM enthusiasts talking about all things VM related. Brian, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm super excited and a little bashful to have you here today. Likewise. So you're you're convinced, like, sweet. You have convinced me. I, you know what? I, cloud VMs seem relevant. They seem useful. They seem a lot of fun. So I guess what I want to know is, how do I get started? Do I have to travel back in time, find a dusty manual somewhere, blow it off, look up instructions? If I want to use this, where do I go? What do I do? Come on, man. These are these, we're in the cloud now, right? So um, it's a web world. So you know, I think the great place to start is on the web. So there's a cloud console at cloud.google.com that is a website. You know that you can manage all cloud and in there, a uh, compute engine. So I think it's a really good place um, to see what's possible, to explore, learn, get some visualizations on what's going on with with the machines. And there there is a command line though. If if someone like me oh, yeah. a little more, okay, just check in. Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah, I know you want to you want to go for efficiency and automation. And the like, there's definitely a command line, um, and it uses the same API behind the scenes. Do they interact with each other at all? Or are they just two separate tools with the same API? So they're primarily separate tools, um, but there's some neat kind of bootstrapping stuff. Um, at you know one high level is there's a there's actually a, a command line embedded in the web UI, so you can you know hit a button and and get a you know a command line interface off of actually a little VM that we run for you. Um, but in addition to that, any of the compute engine pages you're on when you go to like say create a, a new VM, fill out a bunch of things, make a bunch of decisions. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a link to get the exact G Cloud syntax that would do the same thing as you just set up in the web. Oh, that's very cool. And then you could go into that like web shell and use it. All right. I, I can see paste, go. how that could be useful, like very useful. One of the things I'm wondering about is I, I come from, again, like container world, right? And I'm used to using something like Docker where I can declaratively say, this is what I want my image to look like. Uh, you know, I wanted to have this layer. I wanted to have this set of tooling. Is there anything like that for VMs or, or Google VMs? Absolutely. Um, and you know, in particular, people use a lot of Terraform for that. But I, I want to take a step back at that some of the things people do on VMs are kind of manual. And you know, for a long-lived VM, you know, a manual setup and take some backups that is a a, a reasonable thing to do for a, for a you know a one-off. Um, but as soon as you start having, you know, you know, multiple copies of that or a more complex setup, you you start wanting automation, right? So um, there are multiple different tools that use the same APIs to create VMs and configure the networking and the like. Um, in particular, Terraform is very, very common. Um, I think it's also worth checking out Pulumi. Um, and, you know, both of those will let you set up a configuration, declare how you want things to look, and push that out. And... Part of the reason I think this is so important, so it's important for production to be able to like make things consistent, right? But in addition to that, testing is really hard. Like almost nobody can afford to run a full test environment that's the size of production. And in physical machines, it, as far as I know, almost never happens. Um, but if you have things automated, you can run a test of a smaller number of machines or the same number of machines for a shorter amount of time for way less money. You know, you can be talking like 1% or parts of a percent of, of what it costs to run in production and do a completely valid test in the same environment using the same tools. So that's really powerful. Oh, wow. That, that's really cool. And I've actually seen that pattern a lot in Kubernetes. I, I talk about Kubernetes a lot because that's my context. But in Kubernetes, you're, you have this ability to automate what happens when you do certain actions. So if I wanted to release some code and have it go to a small staging area before it went out fully to production, you could do that. And, and what I'm hearing, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like you can do that same thing, but on a different scale. Uh, you might be able to do that with your entire cloud infrastructure using you know, some of the tooling you were talking about. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So you know, people use things like Terraform to, you know, uh, declare the setup of things like, a, including a Kubernetes cluster itself, maybe buckets, you know, for storage, maybe a database, um, some VMs, like I mentioned, and you've got your entire setup, you know, all scripted out and repeatable, ready to go. See, that's that's amazing. And this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm happy that I've been convinced. Something I am curious about, though, is 
if I already have my own system, uh, maybe I switch over to VMs from on-prem, I have my own way of accessing my, 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 my workloads, my VMs, all of that. Can I still do it? Uh, for instance, if I had like an SSH keys, I was using those to access my system. Can I still use those on Google Cloud? Absolutely. Um, and this gets back to like the VM is just a computer. So like, and it's the most compatible thing we have in cloud. So if you can do it on a computer, which is they're extremely good, you can do it on a VM. So yes, you can log in with just user accounts and passwords. You can log in with SSH keys, um, whatever you've normally been doing. Um, for SSH keys, we have a couple of things to help out a bit. So if you've got, you know, automation you've been using, you can keep doing that for managing keys. Um, we also have a way where you can push keys up into the project level and have them be available um, on the VMs. And if you're not running something like that, you know, you're already logging into Google Cloud with a Google account. So you can essentially delegate the rights to log into a machine, and then we will create the SSH keys to make that happen and make it work. Wow. So there's a lot of power there. Um, I guess, okay, so there's flexibility. I can use tooling I already know. At this point, there's really nothing that's leaving me or stopping me from signing up and using this. And then I guess I just, I don't know, I set it, I let it run, I get the promo, I win the day, I drive off in the nice car, right? (laughs) It's all done. All done. (laughs) You know, software doesn't work that way, right? Like things change, you know, like the context around it, you've got new versions, you know, maybe the load changes up and down, that sort of thing. Um, Yeah, so things change. And I think... You know, some of the stuff we've talked about already helps with that. So when you talk about groups of machines and a managed instance group getting bigger and smaller, that helps with uh, load changes over time. Um, if if we decide to do some work, like some planned work on uh, the host machine or, um, you know, the kernel needs an update or something like that, we'll do a live migration to move the VM to another machine with no downtime and then do that work. Uh, That's transparent so to me, help. it sounds like. Exactly. So that'll help with some changes that need to happen at the data center level. And then, you know, when changes happen to your software, you know, you'll need to update it and do versions. So if you've got a system you're already using for that, you know, you can probably continue doing that. Um, Another pattern that I think is um, pretty common in cloud, but not other places, is you, you build up the whole disk image, including the software, and then call that version A. And then you build up another disk image with a new version of software, call that version B, and then you can kind of rotate that into one of these groups and upgrade that way. And if something goes wrong, you can just go back to the old image. This is why I'm convinced because all of these features that you're talking about are the features that I was like, oh, this is why I love Kubernetes. It's so easy to use. It's And it's all of them are in the VM world. So I, I, I strongly believe that most of the... The advantages, you know, we, we get from kind of a cloud native architecture and that sort of thing can be done in VMs on the cloud. So that brings that, uh, those features, those abilities to workloads that, you know, might be a lot of work to migrate or require coordination with a, another team that may not exist anymore or with a, an external company or something you can't do. And so you can get a bunch of the same benefits uh, to those workloads as well. Wow. So... I, like I said, at the very beginning of the episode, I'm convinced. I'm going to go try this. And if you're watching this at home, one, thank you so much for watching us talk about VMs for six episodes. But two, go and try this out. And then, Brian, you've kind of led the direction of the conversation so far. What we need to talk about next, where do you think we should go from here at this point? So I think, you know, we've hit a pretty good baseline, you know, of of like fundamentals. But I think... Where we go next really depends where people want it to go. So I would love if folks who who watch this long, again, thank you, um, commented you know, below to say, you know, here's what I'd love to learn more about, what I'd love to go deeper on, um, you know, I'd like to see an example of, or could you bring in another expert to talk about something? Those kinds of things. So let's do that. If you're watching this at home, leave a comment below. Tell us what we should explore next, like, I don't know, security or any other topics. And we'll take a look and see where we're going to go in the future. Thanks again for watching. That's the end of this season. That's the end of VME end to end for now. Thanks, Brian.